Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to the Bison Workshop. I'm Bob. And today it's a thundering and lightning and storming and we uh, pretty much stuck to the inside of the house. So I just got some parts in for a TV that I want to fix and I want to show you guys how to fix it. Uh, the problem we were having with this TV was uh, I woke up about four days ago, four or five days ago, and the screen looked like that you had turned the brightness all the way, just about all the way down, you could barely see the, uh, the screen. So I went ahead and got another TV to replace it. I use it from a for my security cameras right there and uh, that's what it's supposed to look like it's bright but this one however was not and we're working on an element and uh, let me get a model number for you guys this is an element model E L E F W three two eight, and it's a thirty-two inch monitor or TV. And no, it's not a smart TV. Of course, I haven't never seen a smart TV. They're all dumber than a box of rocks. But anyway, I wanted to show you how to fix this. Now, this this is no guarantee, but for the most part, I pretty much had good luck doing this. I've only had one monitor, computer monitor, that I did this to and it didn't work. So there's a ch slight chance that it may not work. But I'm pretty confident about this one because it's pretty obvious what the problem is. So I'll pan you down here and show you what I found that caused that problem. So. I've already taken this apart and taken this back off of it and I wasn't going to put it back on there but I just kind of moved this back and unplugged the uh, speakers and uh, this here is the only board that's in here. So this is actually a pretty simple one. Most of the time you have two boards, you got your controller board and then you have a power supply board but this is both in one and it's pretty simple so usually when you have a problem with either a black screen or a dim screen it's usually a capacitor and what i have found here is let me bring you over here a little closer If you look, these capacitors have a slit in the top of them, and those are designed to allow these to, to expand. And we have four capacitors here. And these two right here are bulging. When you have a hump on the top of them, that's an indication that that capacitor is either bad or is pretty close to not working at all. So these two capacitors I have to replace. So we're going to replace these two capacitors and we're going to leave these two alone because they're fine. There's no bulging to them. They look basically brand new. So uh, we're going to take you out to the, uh, the gun room and I've already got the soldering iron already ready to go and we're going to take these two out and we're going to replace them. Now these are uh, 330 UF at 35 volt, both of them are. So I went on eBay and I'll put a link to, the, uh, to these in the description where I got mine on eBay. 
and they weren't very much. You get 10 for like, I think it was like $6 or $7, somewhere around there. It wasn't very much. So if we can replace these and it works just fine, it was well worth the six bucks. So that will basically make this TV work like new again. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this board out and basically all I have to do is just unplug all the plugs, take the screws out, lift it out, and we'll take it in there and we'll show you how to do that. All right, so now we have the board out and we're gonna replace these two capacitors. And I bought a six pack, or I mean a 10 pack. So we will open this up. Be nice if I had a real sharp pair of scissors. All right, so we've got two capacitors here and what you have to remember on these capacitors is you have a negative side, which is this silver strip. All right, well, these have to be put in in the right direction. Now, if you notice on these, you have the white strip right here on this side, and both of them are on this side. All of them are facing in one direction. So we have to have that silver stripe on the correct side. So the first thing we need to do is mark which ones they are. So let me get a marker. I don't know why I keep losing my marker. So we want to find those on the other side, which is right behind this piece right here. So we will start looking for that. And that is this one, this one, Let's see, the third one, you got one, two, three, and four. So we're gonna go with the third one. All right, so these two need to be taken out. Now, a lot of times they have a lot of pins sticking out. So basically what I'll do is go in here and I'll clip those pins as short as I can get them. All right, because they bend them over. Sometimes they don't cooperate with you, but we want them to be as short as possible. So now, I'm going to reach over here, and I'm going to grab this capacitor, the first one, and we're going to put pressure on it, pushing it that way. Uh, so we're going to take and desolder, or melt the solder on this one. And then we're going to go the other direction and start on the other one. Whoops. This is about a junk soldering iron. And then we'll go to the other side. I'm just rocking it back and forth, taking it out a little at a time because there's not a whole lot of room for moving it. So that side is out. So now we'll do this side. And now we have that one out. So then we'll do the same thing to the other one.
and we'll back go to the other side and push the other direction all right and that one's out and that one's out so now we need to make sure that hole was cleaned out so I usually use a desoldering, but I can't find my desolderer. So we're going to see. That's too big. Um, we're going to need to find something real tiny. A paper clip will work just fine, but I never can find a paper clip. So here, we're going to use this thing right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat that up. And we're going to open that hole up. And hope it's long enough. Alright, so now we take our new one. And remember our polarity. All right, so now we've got our new one in place. Now we're going to take and just bend that just a little bit. We don't want to bend it all the way over. Some people bend them clear over, but we just want to hold it in place. So now let's take our second one. Remember your polarity. Now that one we're going to have to uh, warm it up a little bit and push it through. Same thing, bend it over. Yeah, I scratched the board, but that ain't going to hurt nothing. In fact, you'd probably polish it right out. So now we've got them in place where they're supposed to be. Our polarity is in the right direction. So now we're just going to add solder to it. And I'm shaking like a leaf. There's that one. And then we'll turn it. It's easier to get the uh, soldering iron in on that direction. Now we've got them in. Now all we got to do is trim them off. Be careful they don't fly up and hit you in the eye. And there we have it. So while you have it out, if I can pick that up. Now we've got our new capacitors put in. They're nice and tight. And while you have this out, you want to check all the rest of them. Make sure there's nothing else that looks bad. And uh, everything looks good. So now it's as simple as put it back in. And I will do that. And we'll test her out. All right, guys. Now we're going to take this one out. I need to find the power button. Oh, well, we'll just unplug it. All right, we're just going to remove this one.
I hate taking these things off. They put them, the thumb screws so close to the edge you can't hardly get a hold of them. Oh, for heaven's sakes, man. Let's move this one off to the side. Unplug it. So now let's put this one up there and see if I did a good job. Let's just hope I did. <laughs> All right, so now let's uh, hook the VGA back up to it. Those things are a pain in the butt to get it back on, to get them tight. All right. So now let's put this up here. And let's, moment of truth, guys. Let's see if it works. Blue light. Well, now I need to bring the brightness down because I had to have it so bright. But now I don't need to, so we will do our setting picture. And bring the contrast back down where it was at 50. And then bring our brightness back down to 50 where it used to be. And there we go. It is bright again. It was to the point at 50% brightness that you couldn't hardly see nothing. So. Now we got her fixed. So I'm thinking real serious about putting this one out in the shop uh, and using the monitor that's in the shop. Look, my deer are out there waiting to be fed. Uh, them fed them once, but uh, they're going to have to learn that we only get fed once a day. <laughs> so uh, that's how you fix a dark screen on a TV. Usually it's, if you have a black screen or a dark screen, it's usually a bulging capacitor. So, uh, I hope this guys helps you to fix your element. And like I said, I'll put a link to those capacitors in the uh, description. And uh, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe. You guys have a good one. Later. <laughs>